Hi, my name is Eli and I run an indie game development studio called Treefall Studios. I make games of all genres from 2D games to 3D games with higher fidelity graphics. In today's video, we're going to talk about how you can start your own game development studio with as little money as possible. With that being said, if it's your dream to open up a game studio, let's get the ball rolling. So first things first, I'm going to be talking about everything you need, all software, all tools, everything that you're going to be able to need to make a game from completely from nothing to having a brand game, a brand game, a brand game, brand new game. However, this video is assuming that you already have a computer that is capable of running um, this software as well as a stable internet connection. If you don't have those things, you will have to have a little bit of upfront cost when starting your game studio. In this video, however, we're going to be talking about everything you need to build a game from scratch all by yourself. We're going to break down game development into different categories. 3D modeling, the game engine, music production, coding, and art. So let's start with 3D modeling. Uh, 3D modeling is something that I think anybody can pick up and learn because I am definitely not a skilled artist. Um, I wasn't born with some crazy art skills. Everything I know that I've done has been a slow journey process of learning how to do it myself. And one of the best programs out there, which is to me up as quality on the industry standard, is a program called Blender. Blender is free and open source and you can download it completely for free. It's uh, They recently released the newest edition, which is Blender 2.8. Blender can do anything from low poly, uh, simple models for a smaller simple game to high poly models to character creation. It can rig your characters, you can sculpt in it. Um, you can do anything that you need to do for models for game development. So to have stuff in your game, if you're going to be making a 3D game, you're definitely going to be needing a 3D modeling package. My recommendation is to go with Blender. It is the cheapest option and you can still get very high quality stuff out of it depending on your own skill level. So let's move on to art. So art can is just it encompasses a ton of different stuff. If we're talking about 2D games, we might be talking about 2D sprites. Uh, we, if we're talking about 3D games, it could be anything from concept art, which are 2D images, to textures, which encompass 3D models, to doing the logos and that kind of art. All that stuff you need to have for your game. So you're going to need an art package. This is one of the more expensive areas um, for game development. So I'm going to give you all the free options for everything. And I'm going to give you my opinion on what I use, what I pay money for. Um, so the free option for the art program is GIMP. Um, some people love it, some people hate it. But you can't deny that it is capable, maybe not to the quality of the industry standard, which would be Photoshop. Um, it's not to that level, but for a free program developed by a group under an open source type of license, um, it can do a lot. I have personally used it for a bit. Um, I find it to be a little clunkier than Photoshop. It's not the exact same like some of the stuff that I like to do. It's not as intuitive to me. Um, I find myself having to Google more tutorials, but that isn't to say that you can't make good work in it. And I have personally seen people that make games, um, some of my friends and stuff in the industry that use that and their stuff is really high quality. So Photoshop is basically the industry standard for when it comes to uh, an art package. There's a whole suite that Adobe does, which is Photoshop, um, Illustrator, Premiere, which is for videos. But you get all these packages in their creative cloud. The problem with Photoshop and Adobe is it is expensive. I might even get a little heated in the video. And if you're looking at getting in the game cheap and you want to just start a studio, this is your hobby, this is your dream, you haven't been able to quit a full-time job yet, you don't have a savings buffer or anything like that, you don't want to go and pay a bunch of money for something that you don't have your full time invested into. Um, so you can no longer just pay for the software and have it outright. 
they've gone to a subscription only service. So if you stop paying, you no longer can use the program and you just gotta always pay forever. It's like renting software, which is just awful if you're trying to keep your costs low because they can always just continue. If you have to have that subscription and you have no other competitors, they'll eventually just keep raising the cost over and over and you're stuck forever and just keep paying more and more and more. So what I have found recently, and uh, this is not sponsored, but I'm gonna gush on for a little bit, is a new um, company called Affinity. It's actually a brand. Affinity is the brand. The company is called Serif. They've actually been around for a while, um, but they are now making Adobe competitive, competitive products. Um, so they have their own suite of design tools. Um, it's called Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Affinity um, Publisher, I believe. But in terms of game development, uh, designer and photo are both great options. And the kicker here is this is paid software. You do have to pay for it. Uh, so it's not like GIMP. So if you're trying to go all free, still go with GIMP. It's a good option. But I think personally for me and for most indies out there trying to save a, a quick buck, but also be able to make high fidelity art and like great content, um, Affinity Photo is like the best way to go. It cost $50, listen to me, 50, five zero, fifty dollars one time perpetual license, you have it forever. So you take that with what you will, um, but there's a couple free options. Inkscape and GIMP are both free, good options for people trying to make art for games, as well as uh, Affinity Photo, which is a little bit priced above um, the free versions, obviously, there is a little bit of cost to it, but you get a very comparable tool to Photoshop and you save a lot of money. Now, this is one of the coolest parts of game development, and we're going to talk about the game engine. Okay, so game engines, we live in an age where there's just all sorts of options. I mean, you can get like anything. There's a bunch of competitors out there, but your main options right now are the Unity engine and the Unreal Engine. For the longest time, Unreal has been like this powerhouse, we're the big strong graphics, you use us if you wanna make sweet, awesome games. And then Unity was this like friendly, like come to us, we'll, you can port your game to anything, anywhere, and uh, you can make just about anything in Unity. It doesn't have to be a first person shooter. You can make 2D games and small 3D games and all sorts of stuff. And then over the years, uh, Unity has gotten so popular that they've gotten so comprehensive. Like you can make graphic games with graphical fidelity that's just as good or better than Unreal. So over the years, they've grown so much. They have a full 2D toolkit. They have a 3D toolkit. They have multiple render pipelines. You can just do anything that you want. Make any kind of visual fidelity game that you want. You can go high-end graphics, mid-tier graphics. You can go full like sprite pixel art. You can do anything. And the world has come to them by storm. They're definitely the most popular game industry, game engine in the industry. But that's starting to come with a cost. Originally, Unreal cost more, okay? So we're, we're all talking about cost here and saving money. That's what this video is all about, setting up a studio without a whole lot of cost. Unreal currently is free. Free to download, free to use, free to learn. But there's a catch, okay? They take a percentage of what you make when you sell your game on whatever platform it is. I think you get a little bit of a boost if you're selling your game on the Epic Store, like they they kind of cut you a deal there. But like if you want to release a game on the PlayStation, on the Switch, the Xbox, the computer, like on Steam or itch.io, any of those places, uh, they take a percentage cut. And I believe that the cut is 5%. There are a couple versions of Unity that make it still the very most attractive option out there. There's a free version, which is the quote unquote personal version, which lacks some of the features. So currently, if you want something past the personal version, um, so if you're making too much money or you want additional pro features, um, there's a plus version and a pro version. The plus is $35 a month. The uh, pro version is $125 a month. Keep in mind, these are per person, like for, for a seat. So if you have a team of three, uh, which I do at some points, 
like for every single person to have their own version of Unity, they would each have to pay that per month. They've already announced they're raising their prices January 1st, 2020. So the plus version is now going from $35 to $40 a month. And the pro version is going from $125 to $150 a month. So this is going to get developers doing some cost benefit analysis here. Uh, depending on how much you think your game is going to sell, there's going to be a break even point where, you know, where originally Unity was cheaper to get in and you had no royalties you had to pay. Unreal was free to get in. And then the royalties on the back end made it more expensive than getting in with Unity per year. Now there's going to be a cost benefit here where Unreal might be cheaper and the better option in some instances, depending on how much money you think you're going to make with your game. Let's say your indie game made $10,000. So let's say that you took one entire year, just 12 months straight, you made a game. And in the first three months, you made $10,000. On the Unity side, you had to pay for the engine for 12 months at the new price starting brand new 2020, $150 a month for your seat. At the end of the year, you would have paid them $1,800. On the other hand, let's say now you use Unreal. Well, they don't take a cut for the first $3,000, so they're only taking a cut on the $7,000. 5% of $7,000 would be $350. So $350 versus $1,800? If you're talking about PC development, you're looking at a very different cost situation. So do you want to make a game in a game engine completely for free? And this is where I'm going to give you a couple extra options. Um, one is called Godot and the other is called Lumberyard. Um, we'll start with Godot first. It's a completely free open source game engine that can do 2D art and 3D games, 2D games and 3D games. And it's completely for free and you can export your games to phones, so mobile or mobile. I watched too much Doctor Who. You can um, export your games to the PC. Uh, so you're limited, I believe, with that engine. You, if you're looking to do concept console development like Switch or PlayStation, uh, it might not be your development um, engine of choice. But if you're just getting started out, you just want to make a PC game. It's a completely free option. One last engine to give you guys some options on how you want to choose to set up your studio and make your games is actually an engine called Lumberyard. So Lumberyard is actually owned and developed by Amazon and you would think that Amazon makes a lot of money, they probably charge high prices, like what's the deal? Well, they're completely free with one tiny catch. AWS, which is like Amazon Web Services, I believe, if you're going to make an online multiplayer game and uh, you just pay them for that, for whatever services that you do decide to use. If you're going to make a single player game or like a local multiplayer game, well, you've got a completely free engine that's designed for AAA development. So another huge aspect to your game is actually sound, sound design and music. You gotta have it, you gotta have music, and uh, it's just part of the whole gameplay experience. So I know for my audience, especially for game developers or aspiring game developers, you might not be musicians. So your best option might be to hire an actual musician to make your music. So the only free, good, comparable option that I can find um, doing a little research for this video is GarageBand. The only catch is it's only on Mac and as you can see I'm a PC guy, I don't have a Mac. Uh, so I couldn't really find a good free Windows version um, of a free music creation software. I personally use something called FL Studio. You do have to pay for it, um, but it's inexpensive in the comparison to the Adobe's of the world. Uh, so you can get into FL Studio and this is a whole suite of stuff you can make whatever kind of music you want sound effects background music for games all that kind of stuff um, you can use it to make that kind of stuff and you can get in for 99 dollars perpetual license and i believe it comes with lifetime updates so you just pay it once and then you're set um, the 99 dollar one there are some limitations that's like the small version uh, i think you can make music with it and sequence out tracks 
but I never owned that one, so I'm not sure if you need the regular edition, which is $1.99. I know that for the regular edition, you have to buy that in order to record your own audio. So like if you wanted to plug in a mic and record some audio and edit it for like some sound effects, like jumping sound effects or step sound effects or something like that for your character, um, then you're gonna need the, the regular version, which is $199. But uh, on the grand scheme of things, you know, that's less than what I have paid for one year of Adobe and you get it forever. And we're gonna talk about coding. Um, this is a strange one. I really almost thought about cutting this out because most of the time these game engines like Godot, Unreal, Unity, um, all of them, they just have like a scripting editor built into the engine usually. So you can just code right in the engine. Unity used to have a, um, their own scripting editor called MonoDevelop, but since the most recent versions, they phased that out. So you're forced to use something like Microsoft Visual Studio. All of these programs are massive programs, game engines, modeling engines, um, art packages, music packages. I mean, they're all industries in themselves. So if you're gonna make a game by yourself, you're gonna need to know how to use these things. And there are a ton of ton of free resources on the internet to teach you how to use these things. Um, but it's gonna take some time, dedication, and practice to all of these programs to use them to the best of your ability to make some good content for your fans. As you move up in the industry, yeah, you're gonna wanna pay for a few things. Um, like I pay for my music production software. I just bought Affinity Photo. I will be buying Affinity, Affinity Designer and you know, you pay for a couple other things. Like once you get more advanced, if you're talking about texturing and material editing and stuff like that, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can pay for to really get some crazy looking graphics. Um, you can buy plugins for your engines, you know, just different things like that, um, that will cost you in the future, depending on where you go and where you grow. But with all these tools being said, I think that there's a ton of options out there for you to go completely free, make a game and sell it on the computer or even on a mobile device, I believe, um, and just make a little bit of money. Just learn how to get your feet wet in the game industry and just, just go for your dreams, man. With all that said, if you like this video, all I ask for in return for my research and work is just that you drop a like on this video. Also consider hitting that subscribe button if you want to keep up with us about our journey in game development, um, view more videos about game development in the game industry. Be sure to hit that little notification bell so you're always updated whenever we post. See you in the next video.